and good e afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we have uh, two uh, guests here, Chris and Lynn, uh, to take us through um, the questions. Uh, Lynn has to leave in about 25 minutes, so we'll try to go through this as uh, quickly as we as we can. Um, in particular, make sure we get answered all the questions that uh, Lynn would want to contribute to. So uh, why don't we just start at unless they have a somebody has something uh, different in, in mind. Why don't we just start at the top and and uh, track on through the questions? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, the first question was really about um, the difference in size between the, the two estimates. Uh, and uh, if you could just take us through uh, exactly what the contributing factors are for that. I'm going to be watching a, a Zoom meeting. It's a town meeting, so I'm going to have to hang up. I'll talk to, I'll talk to you later. Bye. That sounds like Lisa Petraglia. Okay, um, Lynn, Chris. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I don't want. I don't want to answer it myself. <laughs> okay. The the I believe the twelve two thirty estimate was from the twenty eighteen report. Yes. Not the twenty twenty three report. Yep. And yes. that I believe was to gut all the way to the to the studs and rebuild okay oh okay ours is just basically what do we need to do to address the current condition of the building to make it so it's habitable for our municipal offices our senior center and maybe be able to do other additional things in the future that's the biggest difference okay is we're not taking it all the way back to the studs, okay? We're just taking what's there and we're fixing what needs to be fixed to make it so it can be used for offices. Okay. Okay. Yep. Just so you know, that's what we're that's what we're trying to do um, as the committee. Okay. Now, what is excluded and what is included? We included a sprinkler fire protection system because the fire chief says we now have to have one because under the current regulations every commercial building has to have a sprinkler system we have windows and doors replacement we have hvac we have asbestos removal pcb removal and working with the water system to update the water system we have OPM fees because any project over 1.5 million requires an uh, owner's project manager. And then we have designer fees because we're not sure if we can get by with just an engineering firm or if we have to go with a full architectural firm. Okay. Will the uh, uh, engineering firm be the person that will judge that or how will that be judged? Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hire, you know, we have, the process is, is once we get an appropriation, we then have to bring an OPM on board. We oh, will no. talk to the OPM at that point. I did talk to an engineering firm, uh, Robert Hall Associates, and he's indicated that normally an architect would, would be the lead person to bring all these subcategories in to deal with this. But yeah. he said an, an engineering firm can do the same thing. Uh -huh. Okay. okay, so that's why I'm just calling it a designer. I'm not calling it an architect because that's all we're looking for is someone to probably put together a set of plans, specifications, and go forward. I see. Okay. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. And then we have a budget, a contingency for, th for things that may go up in price or may, we may have overlooked as part of our process. Okay. Okay, uh, finance committee. Anybody have any any questions about that? How about furniture and uh, and and the and the like carpeting, floor covering, whatever. That's the floor covering is part of the contingency. Furniture, we're going to use our existing furniture. It's just going to have to be moved. 
from the various sites into this building. Because we feel that the current furniture is adequate and in good enough condition that it can continue to be used by the offices. Right. So can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Um, you're not going all the way to the studs you're going to use if feasible what's already there yes okay and did you come up with a cost analysis of what it looks like with just what's there and if you had to go and tear in some sections remove a lot of stuff we don't want to do that period well, if it comes up where you have to. Then this project is a no-go because we're not going to go. We don't want to okay. go all the way to the studs. We don't feel we have to. We okay. feel that the building is in good enough condition that all we need to do is eliminate the hazards, the hazardous materials, mm -hmm. do a certain type of work to get it so that we can bring offices in and have them all under the same roof. Where where's the asbestos? Is that on pipes? Uh it's in it's on pipes. It's on glue daubs for the tiles because it's an old construction and way back when they used asbestos in the glue daubs. We do have some flooring that is uh, asbestos containing tile. Okay. We had two asbestos companies come in. We had the original company that did the Ahara report for the school back in 2012 who identified all the asbestos material. He gave us a price, a cost estimate for removal. And then we had a second firm come in to look at it and he gave us a cost for removal, okay? The first firm came in and he said it'd be 674,000 for asbestos removal. And then to remove PCBs would be another 75,000. The second firm came in and said to remove the asbestos as identified in the report, and to remove PCBs would be about $885,000. So we feel comfortable with what we have there for asbestos removal and PCB removal. And the, the asbestos being in the glue, so to speak, is enough to require the removal of the tiles? When we, when we put the roof on at East Metal School back in 2011, 2012, yeah. when we had to shore up the roof in one area, they discovered the glue dobs and we had to come in and have the tiles remediated before they could go in and put the additional bracing for the roof. So I'm, I'm running on the assumption or presumption that we have to, we'll have to do it again, no matter what. Oh. If we had to do it back then, I'm sure they haven't changed the rules and not make us have to do it again. So so you just have to take up the flooring. You don't have to take the walls down. Correct. To get, it, to get at it. Right. Correct. What they'll do is they'll come in with one of those machines. I think people have seen it where they ride it and they just scrape it up. And then they're going to just take it and pull it away. That's all they have to do. Now, we talked about carpeting. If we have to remove any carpeting that is worn or frayed and it's covering asbestos containing tiles, those tiles have to come up also because we're disturbing it at that point. So we will have to take it up. So we have included all those type of costs in this estimate. But we wouldn't be able to just put carpeting over the tile that has the asbestos glue dobs. All we're doing is kicking the can down the road, John. Okay? Because at some yeah. point the carpeting is gonna be worn or frayed or come up, you know, loosen up or whatever. And then we're gonna have to deal with it at that point. We'd uh -huh. rather get rid of it and then put carpeting down and not have to worry about it in a, as a future potential expense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any questions on this? I'm going way back. There was a mold problem in some sort of a downstairs area. That we, had, we had a gentleman come from the Department of Public Health who does indoor air quality assessments. He walked through the building with us. He stated to us in the report, there is not mold in the building. There was no mold because it does not smell. 
he said, if anything, you have a mildew problem. Okay, it's not mold, it's potentially mildew in certain areas. Okay, and he looked at, like I said, he toured the whole building with us, and his answer was, it is not mold in there, it is mildew at the most. Is, is the whole building going to stay up or are we taking part of it down? At this point in time, the whole building is staying up. Do you have to oh, take this? Are we renovating yep. all the space in it? We're changing all the windows out because we know the windows have to come out. Yeah. By doing that, okay, we are eliminating any potential lead paint because we're taking the windows out down to the casing and replacing it with brand new windows, okay? And we're doing it for all 44,000 square feet of the building. Okay. You have to take the ceiling down to put the sprinkler system in? Uh, we had spoken with the, uh, the person to do it and he said they would only have to pop the tiles to be able to put the piping in. So it's a drop ceiling in there? Yes. I suppose I could remember whatever it was 60 something years ago when I was there, but. <laughs> uh, I think I'd be stretching your, your, your knowledge maybe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> the basketball hoops are gonna seem like they're lower. That's yes. not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, anything else on this topic for anybody? Okay, uh, question about, uh, you got a million in contingency. Um, okay, our answer is, if the committee feels more comfortable of putting that before we do the design and architect estimates, we include it as part of the whole project cost. It's only gonna increase the total project cost by $205,672. So if the finance committee feels more comfortable with us doing that, we have no concern over doing that and bringing the uh, revised number to town meeting for approval. Um, it might, um, it, the question there would be whether or not somebody from the floor, having seen this meeting and if there's a, if we're able to put together some kind of a presentation before the uh, town meeting, whether the question would come up. Uh, it, uh, but it, it uh, if it's something that you're pretty positive you're going to be doing, uh, then you, you might as well, I think, open it up. I think any any more detail would probably be beneficial. If, um, if, if it details that you're pretty certain, if you're not certain you're going to hire somebody probably better off just to put that down. We're, we're required to hire the OPM and a designer per right. uh, Office of Inspector General procurement regulations. Because the OPM is required because it's a, it's a larger than a $1.5 million project. Yeah. And, and Inspector General's office requires an OPM for any project above that figure per their regulations. So we know we have to go with the OPM. After that, we do have to have a designer, okay? Somebody, mm -hmm. whether it's an engineer or whether it's an architect, we do need somebody like that to do the official drawings for us. Because I'm sorry, I could draw something on a piece of paper and they're not going to know what I'm doing, to be honest with you. We do need a professional to come in and do that. The uh, OPM for the million and a half project, does that include any kind of repair project? For example, if, a, if the school wants to do a repair project and it's going to cost over a million and a half, do they have to get an OPM? Yes, under under state procurement regulations. Yes. Good heavens. <laughs> what, what about okay. the kitchen? What about the kitchen? Is that usable? The kitchen at the at, at the, the West Street building. Yes. That was gutted, and we are planning on having a functioning kitchen in there. Yes. So that's good. You got to rebuild that. Yes. Okay. We do have the stainless steel tables and we do have some equipment in there, but like the big sink was taken out, we figured we'd have to come in and bring in a new stove or a cooking unit, things of that nature, to be able to uh, generate meals there 
instead of relying on Western Mass Elder Care to bring meals in for our elderly. So maybe I, I this is my ignorance here, but the existing building that you're in, that's leased and it's not owned? Which building? The annex, we, we lease, okay? Which was the old telephone company offices. We own now, this building here. Right. So, I mean, is there plans to sell that to get money to use against yes. this? Uh, at the Monday night selectmen's meeting, uh, the chair mentioned that we will be selling this building and uh, putting it back on the tax rolls. And he talked about applying the money to the project. I'm saying we just take the money in, let it roll into free cash, and then it can be available for any project subsequent to this. We could throw it in a stabilization fund. We could do whatever we want with that money at that point in time. You can't sell the building until the new one is in place. And, well, uh, th that's the whole thing. We, we you know, the, one of the questions was, are there any potential buyers? No, because we're still occupying it. And yeah. I wouldn't want to put it on the market prior to us being able to vacate the thing. Right. Is, is there anything else in the building other than the furniture that would be usable? No. No. There's nothing in that building. <laughs> you get an elevator and big spaces with some chairs and tables. <laughs> well, 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 the the lift is was made an integral part of the of the building. It's actually it's built into a wall. Right. Okay. So that's the problem. And we had to cut out the floor on the second floor for the lift to be able to go up. Mm -hmm. So to be able to say we can take it, I'm going to say no. However, at the building there are still the old. Garaventa stair lifts that were there when the school was there. All we would have to do is contact the company and see if we can get them back into operation and inspected by the state. Okay. Yeah. To get to the rear of the building, there is a ramp that goes in from that rear parking lot that goes into the building to where the old library was, which we would be probably looking at using as a meeting area. And then the front part of the building is handicapped accessible up to the stairwell. So we're just looking that if we need to move people up and down, we can get by with a, a stair lift probably. We don't have to worry about putting a, a, a new lift into the building. Okay. So you got what, a gym and you got a kitchen and... Gym, oh, kitchen. We got, we, got the, we got the big cafetorium when you first walk in there. Okay. okay, right across from the kitchen. Uh, you also have, we also have the old library, which has a stage and a large room. When you go and walk in it now, it's a large room that could probably hold town meeting. There's a room on both sides of that room that can be used if there's a large meeting for uh, overflow, for people to be able to sit in the same room. Uh, we're also looking at probably at some point to put in TVs and, and a better sound system so that people can sh display things at town meetings if they want it. Okay, this is the stuff we're looking at trying to do. I think I was in fifth grade in that in that uh, auditorium and it was divided into three classes. <laughs> okay, well, it's one big, big space right now with the stage right up mm -hmm. at the front. So, okay. Uh, I think we're about down to the uh, question of are there maintenance and operating cost projections for the renovated building compared to those for the senior center and the uh, annex for future budget considerations? We haven't gone that far, John. However, okay. we're looking at currently we have to maintain four buildings. We maintain 10 West. State Street, we maintain the annex, we maintain the old Carnegie building, and we still maintain West, the old West Street building, okay? By consolidating all the offices into one building, we are eliminating the, the care and maintenance of three facilities. Okay. How much, how much do we spend for the lease on the annex? That is about 
reach $2,200 a month. So about 24,000 a year, 26,000 a year, say. Okay, mm -hmm. that disappears. Okay. We, we, we're, we're reduce the heating costs for us because we have, we pay for the heat at the annex, the least building. Okay. We won't have this building with the, with the propane. Okay. We won't have the sewer, the sewer user fee associated with this building. You know, there are going to be some savings in consolidating the offices. How much that'll be? I don't know, but we do currently heat the West street building to a, to probably about 60, 65 degrees to keep the pipes from freezing. And also it's used for our storage right now. So we are using it for a purpose, but we also are expending monies for repairs and maintenance on that building also at this point in time. So the roof was done, you said in 2011? 11, 12, something like that. And at how, how, uh, how many years, 20 something years? Or... I think that was a 30 year roof we think we threw on there. But we all know 30 years, eh, we'll, we'll probably figure 25 years. Right. You know, before it starts to show age and wear and tear. So septic and water? Okay. Before I even started this project, I wanted to make sure DEP was not going to have a problem with us reactivating the well okay they have no problem with the septic system where it is right now the well we've been we've been dealing with DEP actually I have a, a, a zoom meeting with them and our engineer that we're using and our water operator to talk about the West Street School water system okay we I did get a price from our water operator for replacing the water water tanks, the chlorination system, and other controls to replace them if we can use the current well. That is a price of about $80,000, give or take. That's the quote that they gave me. To go in, replace those four large tanks with probably three polyurethane tanks, because those each of those current tanks cost thirteen thousand dollars a piece plus shipping. A polyurethane tank would cost about five hundred bucks a piece. Okay. So the tanks are you 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 get a underground you got an artesian well and you're pumping it into a tank so yes. you have enough pressure. Well, actually, you have to store one and a half times of your daily water use in a tank. Just in case the well goes down, you lose power, whatever, you still have water to continue operating. And then, or if, say the well starts to run dry, it takes a while for it to recharge, you have that spare water sitting there in those tanks that can then be used to continue supplying water to the facility until the well can recharge and then start kicking back in and refilling those tanks. Is that a is that a requirement for a public building that uses well That's water? A requirement by DEP, John. Uh -huh. okay. And it, it has to the storage capacity has to be one and a half times our allowed daily use. The daily use, yeah. 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 I didn't know that. That's interesting. Uh, okay. Um, does that take care of that question for everybody? Uh, the next one was, uh, I think it, it basically goes to the question of uh, how comfortable are we with with the um, with the estimates? Um, the uh, can, you, can you tell us how you came up with the estimates? And we wouldn't be in front of you if we weren't comfortable, John. Okay, I'm going to say that one first. <laughs> Okay. Um, we, we wouldn't be asking if we were completely comfortable. <laughs> right. But, 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 but I'm just saying is we wouldn't be in front of you if we felt more investigation was required. Okay. Yeah. The issue is, is we had actual companies come in, like we said, for the sprinkler system. We had a gentleman who, who installed sprinkler systems. He came, he looked at the site, 
He walked through with us and he gave us a hard estimate of what it would cost to sprinkle, put a sprinkler system in for the 44,000 square feet. For the windows and doors, we had, I think it was Lazat Glass come in and actually walk through the building, looking at the condition of the existing doors and windows and giving us the price for replacement. Okay, asbestos, you, as I mentioned, did somebody say something? Yeah, I was just gonna ask on the windows, are you gonna do like some kind of mini slider kind of window or? He gave us like three options we could do on it. Instead of having, we can still have the tall window, but we have basically it blacked out for the top half, say, and then the bottom half, you have where the light comes in, okay? <laughs> Things of that nature. There, there was like three different designs that he did uh, or very options that would be available to us when we move forward to decide how we wanted to replace the windows. But they were all gonna be, like I said, every window in there was gonna be taken out and replaced. And I believe every door was, was gonna be taken out and replaced. Okay. It seems like the, is the big cost savings come from not trying to take things down to the studs and then rebuilding walls and ceilings? Yes. Yes. So that's not horsehair plaster, <laughs> is it? I I have no idea. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. When was that? When was it built? When was it built? Uh, well, the original was 1941. And then 56. Maybe? Then I think it was 55, 56. And then I think it was 60, 61, maybe. So, so it's regular sheetrock? I don't know. I, I, I didn't really look that closely at the walls because they're still covered with chalkboards and things of that nature. So I didn't, I didn't go down and look at the exact makeup of the of the wall material okay um okay uh maybe now is a good time to um, bring up um the question of uh, what happens if something uh, big turns out to be wrong, for example, with the oil tank. Okay, regarding the oil tank, we at this point in time have no clue whether or not that tank has leaked. Okay, that's an under, underground tank. It's an underground tank. Okay, mm -hmm. we, there is no small smell of like oil in the ground or, or permeating out of the ground. However, due to the age, and we know it's a single wall tank, okay, we don't know if there has been any leakage. What we would do, or what I would do, is if we get this appropriation to move forward, I would turn around and do a test boring, hire someone to come in and do test borings around where the tank is to determine if there is any oil in the soil surrounding the tank. If there isn't, then the issue becomes is we have been told an option for us would, could be to leave the tank in place, pump it out, and fill it with a cement slurry and just leave it in place. And then, Don't and worry then, about it. Huh? Then you'd replace, you'd put a new tank what above ground or we've been we've been talking about getting away from oil and going to a propane instead because there is the federal and the state goals to decarbonize the buildings try and decarbonize all our buildings propane is a little less than has a little less carbon footprint than oil we also if we can find grants are looking at possibly putting a solar array in that back field behind the building. That would also reduce our carbon footprint by generating and supplying our building through solar. 
instead. Okay. So, so the radiators are hot water or? Yes. Yes. Hot water steam system, that type of a thing. Okay. That's what our plans are doing. Okay. Now, if there is oil in the soil, that's really becomes a town problem. Because whether this, we continue with this project or not, we still have to remove that tank mm -hmm. and remediate that soil out. Mm -hmm. So we're really almost talking, is if we go and renovate this building, we're really talking a potential of this project and then other town-wide projects. Because if, it, if we find that the oil tank has leaked, that really becomes a town problem because DEP now comes involved. And they take over what we have to do. We do not have in this estimate enough to potentially remediate the soil, pull the tank, so on and so forth. Because we feel that could run any air anywhere from five hundred thousand to a million dollars plus, depending upon the level of a con contamination and what DEP would require us to do to satisfy them that we remediated the problem. Uh, in, independent of this particular project, it sounds like that if you find out that there's oil contamination in the soil, then uh, that whole property, nothing can be done with it until that's until that's taken care of. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. That's why I'm saying that would be the first item I feel that I would push for to identify yeah. because that would either stop the project or allow us to go forward. With these current numbers, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, anybody have any qu any questions about that? I think that's that's sort of the uh, kind of the key thing about um, we have we'll have what five and a half million dollars or so allocated for this project. Uh, it most likely would not be able to cover any um, remediation that would need to be done from any sort of major oil leak in the in that whole tank. So uh, then the issue becomes um, not whether or not you should do this building, but first of all, how do you take care of that that contamination problem? And then what you would have is you'd be back into another, another study and saying, well, all right, now we've spent a million dollars to fix the oil tank. What are we going to do with the property in the building? And then you'd be back looking at the same sort of things that everybody's been looking at anyway, or except that you'd be absent that one problem with the oil. And then the question would be, well, would it be, would it be cheaper to go and renovate the building? Would it be cheaper to try to sell it? Would it be cheaper to tear it down and build two small buildings? So it's, you know, you're back to, you're not quite back to zero, but you're back to the beginning that the two committees so far have dealt with. Uh, right. At, at any rate, the, the project wouldn't couldn't proceed with the with that allocation of money that is there for the project. Correct, and, and we're cognizant of that. Okay. Yeah. That's the problem. We do know that that is a concern of ours. Is has that tank leaked? And if it hasn't, the easiest solution is is because I I would not want to disturb it. If it hasn't leaked, with the fear that maybe we would cause it to leak by trying to remove it. And that's one why. Clumsy back row and <laughs> yeah. One, one so clumsy back row and you've got a contaminated field. Right. So DEP, DEP is good with filling it, draining it. I talked, it? The, the engineering firm I talked to, I asked, is that a viable option? And he says it has been done in recent projects. So again, it would be us getting in touch with DEP and getting their blessing, okay? But I don't want to say anything to them until we know for a fact whether or not it has or has not leaked. Because the minute, the minute you raise their eyebrows on that, they'll be down on us so hard that uh, that'll be the only thing we'll be concentrating on and not concentrating on the other aspects of the renovation project that we want to do. Yeah. I mean, at, at some point before the conversation's over, I just need to understand where the money's coming from. For what? For this project. We, 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 have, identified, we have identified funding sources. 
I know. I just like to kind of go through it a little bit. That's fine. Okay. Um, what um, if uh, this is approved at town meeting? What kind of timeline are you? Do you think you might be looking at? Our timeline is looking at being done by December of 2024. December of 2024. Yep. So the and the very first step would be this question of what's what's going on with the oil. First thing, but while we're doing that, we can also be developing and advertising an RFP for the OPM services. Yeah. It usually takes three to four weeks to go through the advertising and selection process. And then once you do that, and if we find that the oil tank hasn't leaked and we can move forward, we bring it to DEP's attention, talk to them. If they're fine with us filling it, we can then move higher the OPM and then move forward with a designer RFP and selection process. Yeah. And that's going to take probably a good two months through that process if DEP reacts or responds to us in a timely manner. Uh, we're, we're currently uh, leasing the annex. Uh, yes. We are on a two-year, um, year-to-year lease? Uh, or we, have a, we have a three-year lease. Three lease. We're currently in the second year of the lease. So we have basically one more year, which will get us, I believe, to uh, June of 2025. However, the issue has been is when we negotiated this lease with the property owner, they don't want to do any more leases. They want to divest themselves of the building. So they are giving us an option to purchase it at the end of this lease, or they will put it on the market and sell it. And then whether the new owner wants to continue leasing or not, is nobody knows, of course. Correct. Correct. And the, and the price that they're looking at for the building is between 375000 and 400000 I won't uh, say the building, the property, or the property, because the property. they have garage structures behind it, and yeah. then just do the regular building itself. Yeah, and uh, one of the worst exits and entrances on route. Yes, on the route will do. Yeah. Yes, we will agree with you on that one. Uh, when the when the uh, committee started their work back in uh, last January was. Um, was anything besides renovation considered? Did you uh, was, did you uh, look at the possibility of other I, things? I wasn't on the committee when it first started. I'm going to mm -hmm. let Lynn and uh, I think Micheline was on it at, from the very beginning. I'm going to let okay. them answer that question, Joe, because okay. I wasn't there at the very beginning. Okay. okay. The select board yeah. asked us to look at all the options that the prior committee had looked at, so they wanted uh -huh. us to look at numbers to raise the building. Numbers yeah. to renovate the building and numbers to build new. Okay. So all three of those options were presented to the select board back in July. Uh huh. And the number that came out the cheapest was renovation. Right. right. Okay. I think that's probably a good point to emphasize that um, a number of uh, possibilities were considered. And this was the this was the only really feasible one. Um, and, and and just so the committee knows, in order to try and get a price yes. to match the 2018 figure to bring it to 2023 standards, yeah. we contacted uh, Roy Brown, who was the original uh, these architect who looked at the building and developed those mm -hmm. costs. Yeah. He mm -hmm. indicated that we would should inflate their costs from 2018 to 2023. By 60 to 65 percent. Okay, so knowing that this was probably going to be another year in the future, we decided to look at 70 percent because you know that we know nothing's going to go down. Everything's going to continue upwards. So you take that 12 million, add 65 percent to it. 
and it's becoming too too so, cost prohibitive. On top of the fact the buildings wouldn't be large enough for our needs today, and the sprinkler system would have to be addressed because it wasn't addressed in 2018 or it wasn't yeah. reformed in 2018. And we probably still have to address the oil tank issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we still have to address the asbestos remediation if we're taking the building down, because mm -hmm. you have to get rid of those hazardous materials before you can demolish the building. So, you know, a lot of these costs that were associated with this would be associated with the other options also, no matter what. In addition to paying maybe about a million to a million and a half, for just demolishing the building and taking it away and refilling a hole. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, any other questions about the uh, project itself? We we we've also we've already basically covered um, the, on the additional questions, basically covered the first question there about the uh, underground oil tank and drinking water system by understanding what the whole process would have to be in order to go through the project. If we're, but is there any other questions about the project itself before we talk about the financing? Anybody? I think we've covered everything. Jen? Okay. No, it's just uh, um, check. Yeah, getting the ground tested first. Yeah, yeah, that's the first thing. Yeah, and if if that's too, if that becomes too much of a cost, then the uh, amount of funds allocated for it will not allow the project to go forward. So, uh, town be back to back to zero, uh, except it would be in the situation that um, if the oil is remediated for whatever the cost is, then we go through the process which is going through in in 2018 in the process of 2023 and ask now what do we do yes so okay uh financing the uh, these things that we just don't know about there the two uh key pieces of financing are the ARPA funds and the uh funds that are left over from uh, the east meadow school building so uh, our questions basically are 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 we can the ARPA funds be used for a project like this? And uh, on the East Meadow School, is that since that money was raised from an override, uh, can it be used uh, for this project too? Question number one, ARPA funds. ARPA funds can be used for any municipal purpose. Any municipal purpose, okay. Yep. And I believe uh, renovating a building for office space is a municipal purpose. What is a... What, is the, what does it stand for? American Recovery, oh God. American Recovery, I forgot what the P Act. American Recovery Plan Act, that's what it is. And, and how is that money available to us? We've already got it in our coffers. They already gave it to us. As, as is, a, as, wait, this was, was an act. COVID. That was COVID Pardon? money. It's it's a post COVID act that was given that was put out there to try and kickstart the economy basically, and so what the Biden administration did is they just gave money away to the to the communities and whatever to be able to use it for whatever purpose to try and kickstart everything back from COVID. So so it's not really our money at the moment. It's not like in our bank account. It's just yes, it is. Yes, it, yes is. it is. Yes, it is. Okay. We got $1.8 million sitting there in ARPA funds. Now, my so, concern is if we don't spend it, they have been starting to talk about taking the money back from communities that haven't spent it. Yep. So that's why I, I use that as my first funding source towards this project to try and get it spent. So they can't take it back, they have it committed to a project. Okay. Now, the second one regarding that $3 million from the elementary school construction renovation projects. The finance committee, when they first approved this budget or this article, appropriated $2 million out of stabilization fund. 
as seed money. I'm saying part of that 3 million is the 2 million from the stabilization fund. That we have no problem with reallocating to this project. The remaining 1 million 8,000, okay, we run, we run into a problem because the only way we can use it, because what I did is I contacted my rep from the Division of Local Services at the Department of Revenue, and the million dollars could only be used if it was a project that could be borrowed for either the same period of time or for longer. Then we could use it. If we instead did a another debt exclusion vote, part of that money could be used to be applied towards the interest on another debt exclusion vote only. So we can't use this money to pay down our current debt. We can't use this money for any other project unless it's for a borrowing term of 25 years or more. Or we have another debt exclusion vote that is passed by the uh, electorate for a future project. And then only a certain percentage of it can be used towards the interest on that project. Confusing enough for you? Yep. <laughs> Not only enough, too much. Too oh, much okay. confusion. So, we so did... I just have a question. So if I'm trying to understand it, is one million, if we go out and get another loan for 25 years, say, then we can use part of that to pay the interest? Yes. But we would have a 25 year, year loan. Your note, your note yeah. sitting out there for whatever purpose. Yeah. And the note be a note such that there's an early payment possibility? You could do that, John, but it, the, the funds that are sitting in that account can only be used towards the, towards the interest portion of the debt. Okay. So, so well, the, the, the issue becomes is this, and they use an example. If you go to the DL, DLS website and look at uh, IGR 2022-1, and if need be, I can send it to you, John, instead. Okay. To save, okay. you the, to save you the effort, they give an example in there about how you determine the percent that you can use of that to apply towards the interest, okay? And it's it's a quite a interesting calculation because basically it's the amount of leftover funds divided by the original total borrowing amount to give a percent that you can use on an annual basis towards the interest. Then you have to then determine what the interest is on your new borrowing and apply that percentage of leftover from the original borrowing to the interest portion of the debt payment. And that's the amount you can use towards the interest. And I'm sure that's clear as mud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's you know forget about the two million. We got the the million the million dollar there. It's sitting. Well, we have it in a we have the money in a bank account. Yep. And it's just sitting there gaining interest in the bank account. Uh uh Because yeah. the auditors the auditors make us take the interest earned on that and put it in the general fund because it can't put it keep it in that account. And let that account grow. Mm -hmm. But that million dollars, I mean, it, we could we could just let that sit there forever, gaining interest. Yep. Can we invest it in Microsoft or something? <laughs> <laughs> so, the interest earned on the million is moved over to another account. It's moved over to the general fund. 
okay. per the directive of our auditors, our independent auditors. Yep. So if that million dollars and uh, the interest that we earn on that, can we use that to pay the new um, note? Or do we have to use the million? Well, that, that, that goes into general fund, which eventually rolls into uh, free cash. Yeah, or, or it can yeah. be considered as part of our, our revenues that we can use in subsequent fiscal years. Let me let me ask a question. You've got a million eight in ARPA and three million in the unused bond proceeds, both of which are sitting in a bank account someplace, and they're earning something in the neighborhood of at this day and time four uh, percent a year. Well, I don't think it's that high, but it could be uh -huh. maybe. Well, I, I don't know because that's what rates I are I, today. Well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the percentages are, Bob. Because that's where the treasurer has it. I don't know yeah, where he has it invested and what he's getting as a return on it. So, but if you want to use four percent, you can. That's your. Yeah, all right. that's so your you're, you're talking your seven hundred. You're, you're talking seven hundred thousand dollars coming in every year. Is that correct? No. 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 Four percent. Four percent on a million would be four thousand. Well, four percent on a million is forty thousand. I don't even think it's that high. We're not generating seven hundred thousand dollars a year in interest, Bob. I'll tell you that much right no, now. No, all right. So it's probably the decimal point is wrong. So it's probably seventy. Could be. I would. I, I would. I would feel comfortable between fifty and seventy. Yes. It can't be used for any of the principal expenses, only for interest. No, no, we cannot use it to pay down our current debt. That was another statement from my DOR rep. Well, we can use the million. Can you use the million to pay down the interest on a loan of a million dollars? Is that what you're saying? Only a percent of it. Because what I have to do is I have to take that million dollars, divide it by $13.5 million to get a percentage rate of leftover money from the original borrowing. I can then take that percentage times the interest on a future borrowing, okay? and apply that to the interest portion of a future debt payment. It can only be used on new debt. It cannot be yes. used on uh, prior debt Correct. that we had got. Or the current debt that we're paying down on the building. Correct, because that yes. was before we're, so it's only on new borrowing, nothing, after, nothing before new borrowing. Correct. So, but so eventually, could use the money to pay back the principal on a loan. No. Oh, interest. Only interest. And only a portion of the interest. So that there's going to be an ongoing cost of the amortization of the million dollars plus whatever portion of the interest is not paid by the Correct. Pro Correct. bond proceeds. Correct. Okay. What are we supposed like to do with the money? You let it sit until you, you let it sit till you have another project that is equal or greater than the borrowing authorization for the school project. Uh, the uh, and it's it's twenty five. When in, in three years from now, it would still be a twenty five year project. Yeah. The uh, time that goes by doesn't count. Correct. It's based upon what is established by the DOR under 44 section seven and 44 section eight, which are the two borrowing uh, master in the law articles sections. Can we borrow money from, our, from ourselves? No. Nice thought, but no. 
<laughs> so, the, so, the, so the money's going to sit there in perpetuity if we don't come up with the use for it. Is that right? Yes. In other words, there's no way it reverts back when the original debt is canceled or nope. paid down in total. Nope. Not under, current, not under current regulations. Not under current regulations. And whose money is it? <laughs> it sits in the town. It's just, it's just sitting in the town coffers. I mean, where did it come from? It came from the elementary school project. We borrowed $13.5 million for our share of that project. When all got said and done, and we had to spend our share of the project, the project costs minus MSBA reimbursements, we have a million dollars still sitting there. So technically, it's a permanently restricted vehicle that we can't do anything with until we meet the standards of how to use it. So it just sits there, and the only thing that we can use is the interest earnings yes until we can find something that meets the requirements correct good summary that is strange so in the three million there's two million that's in stabilization and we're talking about the other million right originally when the article was approved the finance committee amended the original motion to include appropriating two million dollars out of the stabilization fund towards this project. Okay, I'm saying that that two million dollars out of the three million that's left, two million of that is really stabilization fund money. We can transfer the stabilization portion. It's the amount left over from the debt exclusion vote. That is creating the problem for us. As so I recall, there was a little bit of flack that we got for including that two million. <laughs> yeah, you did. We but, did. We lucked, but we lucked out during the bidding process that the price of the project yeah. came in less than what we anticipated. Yeah, but that's what we, generated this this surplus. So if we had, if we hadn't done that, we'd be looking at over three million dollars that we couldn't do anything with. Yes. So we have the two, we need three, we're a million short. Yep. And so how are we gonna, where do we find All that? Right. That one becomes another tricky issue. We have an appropriate, when back at the annual town meeting in 2022, we voted two articles for the Granby Junior Senior High School. The first one was kitchen renovation for one million, I believe, fifty thousand dollars, and for high school gym and locker room replacement, I believe, for one million three hundred and thirty-four thousand and change. Okay. When we, but each of those were subject to the approval of a committee consisting of the chair of the board of selectmen and the chair of the finance committee. We have a problem is that over a three year period of time, if you spend more than 30% of the assessed value of the building, we kick in ADA requirements. So if we spend more than 30% of the current assessed value of the building. The high school. The high school, a building, yeah. any building. I'm just saying, this is yeah. in the regs, that we then have to bring that building up to current ADA codes. Now, the 1.3 million for the gym didn't take that into account. The 1.3 million, we can say, well, we're going to wait three years for this kitchen project to go off our books and then do the gym. Well, three years from now, 1.3 million isn't going to be enough because I don't see the, the inflation going downwards. I just see it continuing up and up and up. So I'm using a portion of that article 
to make up the million that I could not use from the other article. So yeah, that's what well, Lynn and I, and, and Chris is there, and Bob was at one of the meetings. We met with the uh, building uh, inspector and uh, he took us through all of the details. And it's uh, it's just a nightmare that what you can and can't do when you're running up against uh, these requirements. Uh, but that was why uh, we were able to approve one of the projects, but there's no way we could approve two of them and uh, no way we could no way we could approve them in successive years you would have to wait three years before you could even think about it again and then the costs are going to be a lot higher than they were when they were approved. is the kitchen project underway or is it still on hold or what's the status of that what the the gym project or the kitchen project the kitchen project the kitchen project is scheduled to open have bid openings on the rfp i believe either next week or the week after all right I can't remember which. It's in my calendar, but I don't remember what which day it is. So, um, with that one, there was some funds set aside that was part of ARPA. Is no. that still? No, we 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 didn't use ARPA. We used free cash for that. No, uh, there was two hundred and fifty. Two hundred thousand came. Two hundred thousand was was given to us by the school towards this project from the school lunch program. That's not how I remember that. Lynn, thank you for I'll attending. have to go back. Thanks, Lynn. Because <laughs> I I thought that they had um, grants from the ARPA and they had set uh, 250 aside for the kitchen because it could be used for that. So it was, what only, 200. It was only 200. The town right, appropriated 850000 because what they did is they wanted us to use the school lunch funds so that the additional 200000 that we were going to need out of stabilization could be applied to the school operating budget. Okay. Not two fifty; it was only 200000 200, okay. So you're going to use the gym money or the appropriation for the gym money and transfer it into this project? Is that what you're saying? Yep. But that's going to that's going to have an impact on the budget because you you haven't borrowed the money now, so it wasn't a borrowing article; it was paid through free cash. Or was that was all cash? Okay. Yes. And there's no problem using the school lunch money? That was used for the kitchen. Oh, that was right. for the kitchen. Okay. That okay. was for the kitchen project, yeah. And it, it's not useful to the to the school because they can't do it because of the percentage 30, limitation. That thirty percent kick in factor, yes. Until until when? They got three years. Three, three years, years from now. Or actually it'd be three years from when the, the kitchen project is done. Is completed. Yeah. Plus, there are other renovations that they've done or are doing, right? Yes. Just, just as an aside, it's bothering me a little bit that the school um, cafeteria project hasn't gone out to bid at this point in time when there was such a rush and pressure put on to come up with an answer back whenever the meeting was held. Well, let, let me correct you on that, Bob, okay? An RFP was originally issued last summer. However, they got no bids. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. So they went back through with the engineer. I'm going to say tweet the RFP accordingly and put it back out again, okay? And now they're at the point where they're at the end of that three or four week advertising period to be able to open the bids. If there there any, bid. Again, was there, if people bid on it. Was there any feedback from potential bidders as to why nobody was I, bidding on it? I don't know. That was uh, with uh, the school personnel. 
Okay. So I don't know what the what if they ever contacted the people and find out why they did not bid. I I can't answer that question. They they prepared the RFP too, don't they? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm involved with another organization that had a major project done about six months late and uh, the uh, firms that were available just didn't have the people to do that project and other projects they were committed to. Um, I was kind of wondering if that was a carried over into all sorts of things. So it was just, oh, no. you know, the, the result of, of everything that's happened economically in the last three years, um, you don't have the same number of people working that you used to have. Okay. Um, the uh, how, how is this going to how is this going to translate into a vote or votes? Is it multiple votes? One vote? What? No, one vote. One, one vote? vote. I already have a draft motion sitting in front of the town council to see if what he has to say. And I'm not going to release it until. We have actually a final number because tonight we were talking about having the contingency be subject to that 10% for the OPM and the uh, designer. Okay, because I know the finance committee had raised those concerns. So now that five million three that we were talking about jumps to five million five. Okay, another two hundred thousand. So I'm just I just want to make sure that before we release any any motion because from the minute we we publicize it it becomes an act of god to try and change it because that's all people can remember is what the original numbers are we talked about this is still fluid at this point in time pending our discussions with the finance committee if you do increase the cost by a couple of hundred thousand are you going to do you have a place where you can come up with that funding? It'll be out of that that original 1.3 million for the gym and locker room, because that was 1.3. I was only going to use a million of it. Oh, okay. Now I have to use a million two of it. Talking in general terms, there's yeah. change along with that. So, and then take us through take us through then what you see as the the, the pros and the cons and the considerations about increasing this by the two hundred thousand dollars. It's it's personally I I I I'm just doing it to say to answer the question that the finance committee posed about they felt that the million dollar contingency should be part of the old ten percent OPM and designer. Okay. Pros, it's a higher budget item gives us a little more money to uh, address maybe some unforeseen items. The cons, again, we do know we have a aging or an aged high school facility that at some point has to be either starting to be renovated. And if we're going to start talking about renovating in a more timely manner, the first thing has to be is ADA compliance as the first project so that we can get away and start doing some of the other projects in a more timely manner instead of having wait every three years after every project to be able to do the next one that is required uh, uh it's, it's certainly i think been the finance committee's position that um there ought to be a thorough examination of uh, this option of potential option of uh, tuitioning out students uh, to other districts. Uh, but at any rate, whatever happens, uh, $200,000 is going to be a drop in the bucket for a school project. I mean, you know, any, any major renovation is just going to cost so much money that uh, nobody's going to recognize $200,000 one way or the other. It's just not going to be, uh, not going to be an issue. Um, you know, one of the advantages of putting in this project, besides basically being a little bit more contingency, is that um, just like these past projects, anything which is not used for the renovation 
reverts back to the town after if can be voted out of the out of the uh, funds that were uh, allocated to the project and come back to the town as free cash at some future time. Um, so um, that's what I see as the advantage of increasing the budget by two hundred thousand um, dollars. And the same thing, I don't think that I don't think that. Uh, the town's going to see much difference between approving taking um, one million out of what was previously allocated to the uh, gym versus taking 1.2 million. Again, that's you know you can't say this for certain, but that seems to me to be just a a, a small piece. That the over overriding issue there will be are this town going to be willing to uh, listen to the reasons why 1.3 million isn't going to be an adequate number anyway. And um, that uh, would be better off to be used for this purpose, which is something that goes back how many years to when we first had the committee put together to build a new, basically, town hall, uh, you know, back in whatever whatever decade that was. So that's that's my feelings on the two. So from the high school's point of view. Um, they got to wait, you know, they're losing the million or the million two um, for the gym that they had in their hand. And, but they can't use it for three years, right? They can't use it for three years. And we don't know how much they'd be able to use because they're doing other projects in the meantime. And you still have the assessed value of the schools. The assessed then, value of the schools goes down, then it's less money anyway. So, so Chris, you said something about doing ADA first. So if they okay. spend... if if we wanted to continue forward with addressing major projects at the high school, what will happen is we know we'll trigger that thirty percent trigger to have to make bring it up to ADA compliance. So before we would even consider any of the other projects. We would have to appropriate money yeah. to bring that building up to current ADA standards. And then that 30% doesn't matter because we are at current 30 ADA standards and we can start doing other projects. So, so I have a question. I have a question. question. <laughs> Has it... any anyone looked into the cost of bringing the buildings? Because, you know, I'm just looking at just the high school, but we have a lot of older buildings. So we're putting money into these buildings. Have we looked at the cost of what that would be? I don't I don't know what the current what, what it would take to bring it to the current standards. I I don't go walking in there. I would have to have the building department go in there as part of their annual inspection and then determine what would need to be done to bring it up to current standards. I'm, I, I can't do that. I don't know what that is. No, no, I, I understand Or we'd have that. to hire We're an not... architect or an engineer to come in and do that. Okay? I'm not sure we would make I'm not sure we would do that. I, just as a speculation or a point of information, I'm not sure we want to know that and, unless we're serious about yeah. the first, being the first step of committing a, you know, a ton of money uh, for renovating the school. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't think you want an official report that says all these things are wrong. No, no, I understand. I, I get that. It's our hands are tied because I'm just looking at we're now going to put money into another building. We, we're going to get rid of. We're going to walk yeah. away and end a lease with another and then we have another building that we have to sell. Now, I remember when I first started living here. I've gone to multiple buildings for the town to pay taxes or whatever. So here's just my thinking is we don't have a problem moving from building to building and paying things. It, it just, it seems like there's a sticking point when it comes to certain buildings, we have a problem. Uh, no, I think just, uh, my, uh, my just, thing is if yeah, we true. can come up with a plan to maintain buildings, because I don't want us to have to keep doing this. Okay. 
I will disagree with that statement that people don't have a problem going between buildings. There are many times people come in here and they complain when we say, I'm sorry, you need to go to the Board of Health, which is a mile up the road. No, no, no. I that's get not, that. I'm they not, get I'm, that, but they get that there. You're saying le- it's okay no, to go to multiple not, that's places. That's not what I no, meant. No, no. This that's is what not you what said. I meant. You, but you said what? you. We don't have a problem going misunderst- between multiple vendors. Nope. Nope. No, I did not that's misunderstand not- that. Yes, you did. We went from one building. We closed that building, and then we go to another building. So now we have renovated another building. Now we're going to close a building and renovate another building. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, I don't like going to multiple buildings. I'd rather everything be in one spot. What I meant was, I remember when I first came here, we were in one building. That building closed. We had to go to, we were in another building. Now we're in multiple buildings. Do we have a plan? And that was part of my question is if we're renovating this, what is the future longevity of the building? How are we going to maintain that? Because I don't want us to spend a lot of money and then in quite a few years have to leave that building and go to another one. There are many That's buildings what I'm that were built. About. There were many buildings that were built in the era that the West Street building was built. Mm-hmm. They're still being used and they're 50 to 100 years old. We're talking a 60 year building. We could be in there for 30 to 40, possibly even 50 years, as long as we maintain the building yep. on a regular basis. Not and that's, what I'm, and that's what I'm talking about, that there are costs associated with that. That's for every building. But that's every building, no matter what you do. Correct. Okay, we had to replace the roof here. Okay, yep. that cost us $16,000. Within a year or three years of moving into here, we had to replace the roof, okay? It's part of regular maintenance, whatever we do. What I am saying is we put all the offices into one building. We no longer have to worry about maintaining or doing lawn care or landscaping at the annex. We no longer have to maintain this building because we sell it to somebody else. And the Carnegie building, we're gonna vacate and move the maintenance department out of there and the planning board out of there. We're putting everybody into one building so we only have to maintain one. And there may be enough room to potentially move the superintendent's office out of the high school and into this building also, if the school decides they want to go down that road, which frees up potentially three classrooms at the high school. These are these are things that need to be discussed by the town as a whole. I'm looking at just trying to get our offices into one building so we have one stop shopping. Okay? They only go to one spot. When they go to the police department and say, I need to go to the miss, I need to, where are the municipal offices? And they have to turn around and ask, well, what are you looking to do? Are you want to yeah, pay your taxes? You got to go here. You want to get a, a building permit? Right. You got to go there. But that's not that's not what I was talking about. I'd rather everything be in one spot, like the security complex. Everything is right there. I would rather everything be in one building. It does cost us less. I just don't want us to come to a point where we would have to abandon abandon the building and find something else if we're not maintaining it. That was my point. And I'm not planning on not maintaining it. To be honest with you, we, you know, we, we, we put money into that building to bring it up. We've worked with the boiler system. We don't, when the school was in there, they kept complaining that it had blowbacks. It didn't work. It didn't do this. We haven't had any issues because we maintain it in a proper manner. We have it cleaned every year. If there's something that occurs, we take care of it. We're, if we move into that building, we're going to take care of it. That's what our maintenance budget is going to be for, is to maintain that building. Back to yeah, the question. I think we have to assume that we've, if we consolidate, I mean, we're moving people from three different buildings into this thing. Uh, I think we have to assume that the, the town will maintain that building. I, I can't, you know, why would the town... Why would the town vote against maintaining the building? 
is the other way to look at the question. And I don't think the town would vote that not to, to not maintain the building. You keep talking. Hmm? No, is that what you wanted? Because you keep talking. What was it you wanted? Back to the, the question on the bond proceeds or the discussion we had. Is is the state requirement based upon any borrowing or just one that involves a debt exclusion? No, any borrowing. Any borrowing, okay. Of a period of 25 years or more. Okay. As to the issue of the OPM and designer fees, I think I'm in favor of increasing the project cost by not just the 200,000, but by the 300,000, because to only transfer a million two out of a million three sort of seems like you haven't accomplished anything. You're just leaving some money there for no reason at all. I think it'd be better off in the project. Though I might wonder whether or not the school committee and administration over there are gonna be upset at the fact that a project that they maybe think they were gonna do at some point is no longer funded. With the idea that knowing that if it can't be done in three years, Bob, we know that price is going to be way underfunded at that point in time. Oh yeah, that it's way underfunded. Um, and at that point, in the, in the three years, and the three years hasn't even started running yet. You're right. So you're possibly talking three and a half, four years for all I know. Yeah. Sort of a, another question I have. Um, is the Council on Aging or the Friends of the Elderly, are they in favor of this? I had spoken with uh, Ms. Vivier, who is the president of the Friends of the Granby Elderly, and she is for this project. Well, that's good because this is sort of like deja vu. The uh, Council on Aging was located in the West Street School for a number of years and decided they needed new space. So they went to town oh, meeting God. and kicked the school department out of Alder Hall. Before my time, Bob. I, I, yeah, I, I know wouldn't it. know that. <laughs> it was before my time, too. Yeah. Scott, do you remember that from grade school? <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. The uh, but kindergarten was under the police, the uh, under the town hall in the basement. That's about as far back as I go. Oh my God, that's is that where that old safe was? Right. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I was in the West Street School before the the first edition, or if it was built in forty one, was it? You said. Chris? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I was over there for a meeting one one time when I was in, I don't know, sixth or seventh grade. So it would have been not too long after that. <laughs> Marty Merrill remembers. You guys weren't even alive at the Hall. Hall. <laughs> well, well, Marty Merrill always talked about going to Kellogg Hall for grade school. <laughs> I think my father. I think my father went to high school in South Hadley. That's what they before, mentioned. yeah. Before there was a well, high school. South Hadley High School was in the early '60s, about about the same time as our high school. I don't know. It sounds like you've done a lot of work, Chris, and in, in your team, and it seems. Oh, don't, don't give me the credit. I came oh. after the fact. You're it's just making me the spokesman. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Seems it seems reasonable at this point to me. Um, okay, final question. We would not we would not expect to have to have any kind of override vote if this project goes as it as it is planned and as foreseen. That is to say, with the provision that. Uh, so any kind of bad results coming from contamination of uh, the field around the oil tank uh, just changes the whole situation so much that we're, we're back to starting over again talking about what should be done in various things. Correct. Correct. 
at this point in time, the committee feels it can be done by using these prior articles and ARPA funds to fund this project. But it was pointed out to me, if we, when we say it has no effect on our taxes, that the prior articles were raised through taxation. So that's a fallacy to say that it's not affecting our taxes at all, because these prior articles were funded and paid for through taxation of the properties in Brandon. That was pointed out to me at one point. So they that, rather say that it's not going to affect current or future taxes at this point in time. Yeah, but I mean, even uh, and that holds true. I think even when projects were funded from uh, free cash, was, everything eventually came either from taxes or from the other revenue from the town. And uh, you know, did it come from did it come from your particular taxes on your houses? Or did some, well, you can't really make that kind of distinction. It was town money, and we raised money through various means, including taxation. Um, I just want to point that out that 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 was brought up to our attention here the other day. Yeah. The point is, we would not expect a future raise in taxes. Yes. Anybody have any other questions? I think we covered everything that's on the lists. Uh, if, if somebody feels we missed something that's on the list, uh, please speak up. Um, but I, th I think that one way or another, we've, we've covered everything that we had questions about. The only, the only question, the only other item I would put you had a question is what votes are necessary to pass the various articles? This is all gonna be a simple majority vote based upon the funding sources. It's not gonna require a two thirds vote of any okay. of any purpose. We're just moving funds. Yes, yeah. reallocating them to a new project. Yep. Is the ARPA need a vote at town meeting? That, that that's, a, that's a special revenue fund for us at this point in time, Bob. Yeah. So as part of the motion, we have to identify the 1.8 million in ARPA funds and then identify each of the articles that we're transferring to this amount, to this project and the amount transferring out of that project. Okay, so basically I think then the uh, proposition before us is um, this project and its funding as it was presented to us with the modifications that um, we would use uh, an amount of money from uh, the previous allocated amount to West Street School that was based upon the transfer of uh, of stabilization funds into there, whatever that figure was, and we wanted to uh, increase uh, increase the total amount in the project by using the entire 1.3 million of funds uh, that were previously allocated for the high school gym. And whatever that figure is, we don't, we don't know the exact figure. That's the principle of this. Uh, I think that's that's what the project is is now presented to us. Is is that are we in agreement on that? That that's how we understand the project now. I do have a question based on that. Um, okay. Are we going to be borrowing off that one million? So the three million that so we could use two million, or do we have to borrow? No. Okay. No. Any no. There's no. There's no borrowing. There's no uh, none of that type or any of that type of uh, requirement for this project. The million that we're short, we're using the gym money, right? Yes. And and we're and we're at, and we're adding three hundred thousand dollars to the project. Under, oh. Yeah, this is a buffer. Are two hundred thousand for the one use specific user and engineer and hundred thousand for buffer. So that that's how I understand what the project is now that has been presented to us. I'm confused now. Okay. The project was first of all increased in scope by. A, Perhaps three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, that that part's no no problem. 
okay? And the funding sources have changed a little bit in that the funding source will now include uh, the closing out of the uh, article for uh, about 1.3 million, whatever it was, for the gymnasium reservations. And it will uh, reduce the amount to be taken from the uh, previous allocation for uh, middle school from uh, the 3 million this there to uh, whatever it is that came out of stabilization fund money, whether that's 2 million or 1 million, 900,000 dollars. So the funding source would be the first thing you would look at. It. Those are the funding sources. And then whatever that amounts to as an increase in the cost of the entire project is what we'd be voting on. Well, what's the funding source of the million dollars? The fund, well, the funding source, uh, the, the change in the funding source is that instead of using $3 million from the West Street School Project leftovers, we will use whatever amount of money came from stabilization funds that's part of that. And let's yep. say that $2 million might be $1.9 million. And in addition, we're adding an additional funding source of the closing out of the $1.3 million or whatever it was that was allocated for the gym. Okay, so okay. That, that gives us then the total funding for the project, whatever that amounts to. And then uh, then that, that's the project, though, that's presented to us, the project with that kind of funding and the renovation project from the, from the committee. That's how, that's how I understand it. Is that, are we in agreement on that? that that's, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I was forgetting that the million three is the yeah, substitute. Yeah, that yeah. 300 of it being the, Increase the overall and the million being the offset for the yeah. million we and could exact in, exact increase depends upon how much of the stabilization yeah. fund went away in there. Okay. All right. So I will take a vote to approve I'll take a vote to approve that project. So moved. Do I have a second? To recommend the project. To recommend the project. Do I have a second? Yep. Do we have a Want to have some further discussion on any of the issues involved? If not, then we're ready for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? None. So then that is, uh, that'll be written up uh, as in a, in a way that I think is understandable <laughs> with the very variations. And if Bob, uh, Chris, you can check if it was exactly two million dollars that went from stabilization funds or some other figure, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, that'll be it. And I also, John, before we we sign off here, uh, I also want to inform the board that the committee is going to be having an informational session regarding this project on Wednesday, November twenty ninth. At 6 p.m. at West State at the West State Street for the selectmen meet. So I would hope people, I would hope people would come to that and uh, listen because I imagine some of the same kind of conversations that we've had tonight would be of interest to people that are there to be reassured about the the project. That and the fact is I hope we can get GCAM to come and tape it and be able to show it for the two yeah. weeks prior to the town meeting. Very good. All right. Is there any? Are there any other issues before the finance committee for this evening? Are Are you done with us? Can we sign off now? Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you very much for coming tonight, Micheline. Thank you for coming. Okay. And uh, thanks to the uh, thanks to the committee for all its work. Uh, if there are no other if there are no other issues before the finance committee, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much.